Oliver talking about at the same time. Oh. He's carrying it. Oh, no. They get one of them. He's the ref. Just an end there for the shot. And a Rocket League's evolution over the years has been nothing short of incredible. We've seen the ups and downs of so many talents, the rise and fall of dynasties, and more recently... The birth of Rocket League's next generation. In all this time, even though the core mechanics of the game have pretty much stayed the same, the rotations and strategies have never stopped evolving. I'm Verge. I've been a professional Rocket League coach in the RLCS for about six years now. In my career, I've worked with some of Rocket League's most talented players, minds, and organizations of all time. And through the years working with people and teams like this, as well as deeply analyzing thousands of professional players and teams replays, I have constructed three general formations that I see constantly appearing in the rotations of some of the most successful teams in the world. And today, I'm going to share everything I've learned in my coaching career thus far, so hopefully you can apply this information to your own gameplay. The first things I want to cover are what I call the advantage and disadvantage zones. These zones are what I believe determine who has a statistically favorable position to control the outcome of a play. A player's advantage is the range of space in front of them that they can directly impact. If you've seen my rotation video from three years ago, you'll be familiar with this range. The most advantageous spot is typically directly in front of a player's momentum when driving forward. A player's disadvantage is all of the space that exists outside of this range that requires an additional step in rotation before they can make a play in that space. The most disadvantageous spot is typically directly behind a player's momentum when driving forward. Now that we understand where an individual player's advantages and disadvantages are, let's break down the fundamentals of the three formations I mentioned that are typically used to, for a lack of better phrasing, take advantage of your team's advantages. Each of the three formations I'm gonna speak about all have something in common. There are three roles. In 3v3, the roles are distributed evenly between all three players. But as we dive into 2v2s or 1v1s, one player becomes responsible for multiple roles in given situations. These roles responsibilities apply on both offense and defense. I and many others label these roles first man, second man, and third man. First man's job is to apply pressure to the play. On offense, this means threatening a play that forces an opponent to respond. On defense, this means closing the distance on the opponent with possession and trying to force the ball off of the opponent into space that your team controls. Second man's job is to support the pressure from the first man, but still be mindful not to overcommit. On offense, this means positioning to follow the attack that the first man chooses. On defense, this means positioning in your first man's disadvantage to cover anything that your opponent might do that beats your first man's pressure. Third man's job is to cover all of the outcomes that would leave your first and second man out of the play. On offense, this means covering any potential clears that break the defense out past your first and second man. And on defense, this means covering your net directly in case the opponents are able to get past your first and second man's defense. It's important to distinguish the general responsibility of these roles now because in all three formations that we're going to talk about, the execution of these roles may differ, but the underlying responsibility of each of these positions never changes. Now let's talk about applying these responsibilities to the three formations being used. I call the three formations Split, Layering, and Cover 2. Split is a passing formation. First and second man play forward, and third man positions behind them roughly in the middle of their coverage. Layering is a solo play formation. First man plays forward, second man plays directly behind first man, and third man plays behind both, covering the offside of the play. Cover 2 is a defensive slash counterattack formation where first man plays forward and second and third man play deep behind first man with one on each side. Let's dive into these formations one by one. Split. This is a useful formation when the opponents leave a gap in the midfield, usually when your team has a numbers advantage and the first man has a passable possession. As the first man, you have to recognize a gap in the midfield and attempt to pass the ball into that space. As second man, you have to recognize that your teammate is able to pass across and position yourself to receive that pass in that open area. As the third man, you have to recognize your first and second man are making a passing play and position between your first and second man covering the backfield. Layering. This is a useful formation when the opponents are covering the midfield and solo plays are the best option. 
As first man, you must recognize that there are no gaps in the opponent's coverage, so you try to low commitment solo play the ball into a low 50 that keeps the play close to you. This should create a gap directly on the ball that your second man can then follow. As second man, you have to recognize that your teammate is going for a solo play and position close to that first man, but still behind them. As third man, you have to recognize your first man going solo and your second man positioning close and behind the first man. You then position yourself behind both players, but covering the off side of the field to compensate for your teammates coverage stacking. Cover 2. This is a useful formation for when your opponents are good about controlling their defensive rotations and are getting big clears often. As first man, you have to try and force the opponents to clear the ball deep to one of your teammates. As second man, you should be playing deep behind your first man awaiting a clear. As third man, you should be playing deep and opposite of your second man, also waiting for a clear. Now, how do we choose which formation is the most useful in any given situation? Well, the answer is simply space. Where is the space that our opponents are covering? What space does that leave us in control of? And what play can we make with this space that's left open? For example, my teammate wins a 50-50 over the opponent, giving us a numbers advantage. In this case, a 2v1. I recognize this advantage and push into the midfield because I know the solo defender has to get back to cover my teammate's shot, which leaves the midfield open and in the defender's disadvantage zone. My teammate recognizes the space midfield and passes me the ball. Now I have possession in the solo defender's disadvantage, giving me space to make a play. In this scenario, I decide to pass the ball back to my teammate again for the instant shot which converts to a goal. This all happens because of the recognition of where the space is, seeing my teammate has a possession he can pass into that space with, and my teammate's awareness to pass the ball into that space quickly enough to keep the second defender out of the play. In this play, the ball is given to me on the right side of the field, with space in my backfield. My first touch is to play the ball into this space that I have an advantage. I see one opponent and my teammate rotating behind me in the space on the right. I see the other opponent back on the left. I now know that by playing into the space in my backfield, I've pulled the opponent on the right out of position, leaving space open on the right side of the field. So I attempt to make a play that results in the ball landing in that space. From here, my teammate recognizes that I can only take the ball into a 50-50. He sees both of the opponents covering their backfield and recognizes that the next challenger is going to 50 the ball to his right, which is into the other opponent's disadvantage zone. This is the space the opponents leave open that's punishable. He layers in closely behind me for the challenge and places the potential outcomes in his own advantage. That lets him quickly take possession from the 50 before the second opponent, utilizing the space left open by this opponent's disadvantage. That space gives him enough time to set up his own solo play at net while I look for a demo on my rotation out, further zoning the opponent out of the space in front of my teammate. This play happens because of my initial touch into space, followed by a carry into the space that I created by the first touch, and most importantly, my teammate's awareness of my options along with the recognition to cover the space left open by the opponent's rotations. In this play, the opponents have possession in their corner. I've got a good position to challenge, and my teammate has a strong position deep behind me to cover anything that beats me. I push in his first man, but instead of diving at a challenge, I stay low and force the opponent to throw the ball over me towards my teammate. I'm now able to quickly rotate out while my teammate receives the flick that I just forced. This cover 2 formation allowed us to get possession off of the opponent and generate a quick counterattack by transitioning into a split formation. He passes me the ball in space, where I take a shot, and fortunately the opponent misses the save under pressure and our counterattack works. This was made possible by my low commitment force as the first man to make the opponent give the ball to my teammate, as well as my teammate's positioning to cover the space that I was trying to force the opponent to play into.
These were just a few examples of how these formations can be used to control space and generate advantages. But these formations are not cut and dry, and they definitely aren't the overall answer to any and every position that you'll find yourself in on the field. They are, however, statistically strong positions that, when used at the right time, can give you and your team a favorable position to control the outcomes of a play. If you're applying these formations to 2v2, then apply the first man role the same way, but now the second man has to balance their position to cover second and third man's responsibilities, seeing as they'll be both the support and the last man back in any given play. There are a few more concepts that go into making these plays as optimal as possible, but I'll be going over those in a future video. If you don't want to wait for that video, I'll be running a group bootcamp on Metify covering these formations, as well as going in depth on the concept of out trading your opponents, how to rotate into and out of these formations, how to recognize space, and how to confidently make the right decisions based on what space is left open. This group bootcamp will be on January 20th of 2024, and there are a limited number of seats available, so make sure you click the link in the description to get signed up before it's full. If you missed it, don't worry because I'll be doing more group sessions like this in the future, covering these and many more topics that will help you improve your decision making in Rocket League. Or you can book me directly for a one-on-one -on -one session using the coaching link in the description. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up so your ranked teammates are more likely to see it in their recommended feed, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and comment down below the topic you'd like to see me cover in the next video. But most importantly, thanks for watching. Thank you.